for us, the first quarter is is really uh, still delivering a, a strong financial performance. We're very uh, very happy with the results so far. The unwinding of the congestions and the supply chain uh, disruptions that we have seen during the COVID year is, is actually happening uh, quite rapidly. You mentioned uh, decreases in, uh, in revenues that we're seeing, which are a factor of this. And, and we're seeing a heavy destocking now uh, in Europe and in North America especially, as uh, retailers and companies that had uh, imported maybe ahead of demand during the, the space of congestions there during the last couple of years are now running down uh, their inventory. That creates uh, a background for us to, to, adapt, uh, to adapt to, uh, a new normal, if you will, with different energy prices that what we had before getting into COVID. Uh, and something where we really need to focus on now, uh, riding it or riding our operation for this new environment. Um, everything you say next is going to dictate my, my views on the biggest issue, and that is the reopening of China. What's it looking like from a real point of view uh, and that cross trans-Pacific trade and cross globe trade on the back of the China reopening? You know, actually, one of the things that has been really uh, impressive is throughout uh, the COVID in China, actually, the manufacturing uh, kept on going, uh, especially uh, what had to be exported to Europe and to, to North America. So actually, from that perspective, uh, the reopening of China is more some, a story about domestic consumptions and, and what we're seeing happen there in the market more than on traded volumes with the rest of the world. What is dictating, I think, the lower volume uh, to North America and Europe is mostly consumer, is mostly uh, inventory-led, sorry, uh, as I mentioned before, from retailers having ordered ahead of time because of the congestions last year and now having to run down these inventories uh, before they can order it again. Let me ask you about the cost side, because um, I know that's been a, a feature in recent quarters. Are, are you seeing any easing in those pressures, Anson? So we're seeing some uh, so, some easing on uh, on some of the pressures. A lot of it, obviously, something we have to do ourselves. We've implementing slower steaming. We've implementing different cost measures uh, across our network to really contain cost and roll back some of the inflation that we have seen in the past. Some of it is still uh, something we have to do uh, in the coming quarters, uh, but we are actually quite optimistic uh, with the, with respect to the levers that we have on cost to to bring this back towards what we knew before uh, to or before to the COVID years. Uh, in 2019. Vincent, as we talk about the lower volumes here with the destocking process, what does that mean for pricing? So for us, uh, you know, we've seen uh, certainly a, a normalization of prices uh, here. In, uh, it started already in the fourth quarter of last year, continued in the, in the first quarter of this year, with container uh, prices coming back to something that is more like what, what it was before COVID. So a real normalization of pricing, uh, I if you will. That was a process that was expected. It seemed to have stabilized uh, for now, which is really positive. And it, it means also that for us, uh, it allows us to see that this normalization so far has unfolded pretty much as we expected it with the first quarter that reflects that and and us maintaining our guidance is also a sign that we see this at least we hope that this will continue now uh, for the coming quarters fascinating stories we talk about this normalization it feels like dominoes across various different parts of the business and just looking specifically at your terminals business where it feels as though some of this uh, port congestion has stopped and as a result people are just not using as much storage just walk us through that particular aspect yeah that's 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 exactly right i think uh, when we have seen the congestions over the past couple of years we see we saw basically the whole supply chain clogging up across all the different nodes of of it and and terminals have been big recipients uh, acting very much as a, as a standby warehouse for many customers. That has allowed them to get extra revenue from, uh, from storage. And as, as the supply chain decongests and fluidifies, we're seeing actually that this is abating. And that's, this is something that you can uh, notice in the, um, in the results of our terminal division.